All right, we have a new battery. And this one's from Golden Mate. I think it's a new battery, a new brand. Coming in at uh, $299 on Amazon. And I was scrolling through the features. I don't know why this wasn't showing on my tablet, but I was scrolling through the features and it says high and low temperature protection. Let's open it up. Oh, double boxed. I like that actually. That's something you don't see really often. Let's open it up again. All right, and there's the battery. And inside the box was a user manual. It says you can charge at 50 amps. Standard charge current is 20 amp. Maximum discharge current is 100 amp. 100 amp hours and 1,280 watt hours. You can put four batteries in parallel, and you can also put four batteries in series. I'm immediately noticing something interesting. This is a different case than what we're used to seeing, and I'm seeing screws. So that will be actually really neat if that is the case, because we do like things we can get into, right? It's nice to repair stuff. Look at that. I do see screws. <laughs> I like that already. While we're at it, let's just go ahead and do the teardown. Look at that. <laughs> it comes right off. Oh, guys, you, Golden Mate, you made my life so easy. So we've got to something that I'm not totally used to seeing. We've got a bunch of see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What appears to be 12 gauge. No, 14. So 10, 14 gauge silicone wire for the positive side. And we've got four 10 gauge for the negative side. They put fish tape on the top of the BMS. That's pretty nice, you know, to prevent things from shorting. There's the BMS. We've got the balance leads coming out here. And I do see two thermal sensors. And I'm wondering if these are actual high and low but there's definitely two. It's not the thermal switch that we're used to seeing. And uh, it, it looks like each one of these terminals is screwed down and then covered in this goop. And oh, you look, look at here guys. These are cylindrical cells. That's something different. All right, let's see if we can get this out. I think I broke loose all the goop around the sides. If they don't have a big sticky pad on the bottom, we might be able to get these out. If they do, well, we might not be able to get them out very easily. I think they do have a big sticky pad. Ah. All right, so I'm not really thrilled about trying to injure my hands or something like that to pull these all the way out. Um, so I'm not gonna do that. I've done that before and I wasn't too happy about it. So we'll try to pull this top piece off. Here's the thermal probes. They were just uh, taped onto the top of the cells here. And it looks like, you know, all the cells are in holders and there's two layers. So we've got, I'm not sure there's 15, 40, and then another 50, so there's 50. So there's like 100 cells total. I see some markings on the cells, but it's way down and it's kind of in the area where it's inside the cell holder. Let's test the uh, supposed low temperature production. Okay, I got the charger plugged in. It's charging, as you can hear. And we got 41 amps, 40 amps going in. So let's try to freeze this temperature sensor and see if it stops. It does, it has low temperature protection. 
So I've got it warmed up and I haven't heard the charger click back on. I'm not sure if there's like some reset time or something. Let's try it again. There it is. I guess you have to disconnect the charge and try again. Let's do this once more. Bam. And we're back to charging. All right guys, that's awesome. So we're finally getting batteries that are featuring low temperature protection in a very budget friendly price range. The BMS says, up here at the top it says PK1101 104A235. And then down here it says JG4S120A FT28307. And that's about all I can read. It almost looks like it says 4S120 amp. So I think the build quality is pretty fine. It's not like super refined that we're, like the ones that we're seeing in some of the other batteries where it looks like they've got the manufacturing process down like super well and all kind of purposely made to go in. Uh, this, you can tell that these guys are getting cells, putting them together and building the pack like you would traditionally do. But I don't see anything that's alarming. All the solder joints looked very well and professional. Everything's tight. And I think uh, even though there's a bunch of wires there, I believe that's plenty enough to carry the current. Everything's covered and protected. I don't see any, any place where shorts are going to occur. So let's put this guy back together and let's charge it up and then we'll do a capacity test. All right, we're all set up to do a capacity test. We have the shunt hooked up. We are recording a time lapse of the shunt. We got the alpha 1500 watt inverter. And normally I use my heater as a load, but it's hot and I've got something else. So we're gonna run the AC as the load. But, uh, let's turn it on. Okay, we got voltage, we got 108 volts coming out of this guy. Some people have pointed out that this thing only does about 110 volts. Well, that, that's true. And it actually says it does 110 volts. Anyways, let's turn this AC on. We'll just do it on low fan. We'll see what this does. Okay, so we're drawing uh, 47 amps, 630 watts. So I'd be happy with that current draw. You know, a lot of people do a 0.2C test, and I know that's the standard. Uh, but if you if you watch my discharge test. I usually go well over that. I, I usually go for a 0.5 and even sometimes a 1C discharge test. I haven't seen much of a difference between a 1C, a 2C, or a 5C when it comes to this lithium iron phosphate chemistry. And if it fails, if it fails at 30 amps, which is just slightly over 0.2C, we'll rerun the test and give it another go. Yes, I know I have a big hole right here. I've got to cut out a piece of plywood. <laughs> We got 53 degrees coming out of there. Oh, we're down to 50. I love these ACs. They're not meant for these uh, sliding windows, but uh, I don't think there's a problem as long as you, you know, you cut something out uh, to fit in place. All right, so we're just gonna let this test go, and I'll come back when it completes. We got down to 2%, almost 1%, so we're at 98.5 amp hours, 1,259 watt hours. And the inverter started beeping, indicating that it's getting kind of close to low voltage. So I turned off the AC and I hooked up this fan, and we're gonna try to pull a little bit lighter load to see if we can get it to go ahead and pull full capacity. Yeah, we're, we're pulling 130 watts right now, 12.1 amps. We're at 10.7 volts, 98.7. So I'm gonna let that go and see where, where it takes us. All right, well the inverter's 
complaining again. All right, well, we're down to 1% left. 99.034 amp hours. All right. All right, the inverter went ahead and shut off. All right, so huh, we almost got there. We got to 1%. Well, all right, this is what we'll do. We'll give it one more shot. I'm going to charge it back up, and then uh, we'll do a lower power, you know, 0.2C or less test and see if we can get that 100 amp hours. All right, guys, I uh, got this guy all charged back up, hooked up a, a different inverter. I think this one might cut off a little bit lower, and we're just going to use this fan as a load. So let's try this again and try to pull closer to a 0.2C. And that's under 0.2C. So we're doing 13 amps. We should, we really want to do 20. Okay, there we are. I uh, found another fan. I've got it on low and this one on high. We're pulling 19.2.3 amps. Uh, so that's close enough. And I'm gonna let it run and I'll be back when it completes. didn't get a, any better result actually it's, it's a little worse uh, so yeah that's kind of what I expected I like I said before I haven't seen any real difference between a, a lower C rate versus a higher C rate on lithium iron phosphate so uh, in this test we got 98.27 amp hours uh, 1269 watt hours and I think in the last test we got 99 amp hours we got down to 1% forcing it through so yeah, there it is. Uh, it doesn't actually pull the 100 amp hours. It's very close, but uh, not quite. Everything else on the battery is great. I like the, the ability to open it up. It has a low temperature protection. The price is nice. All right, guys, I'll leave links in the description if you want to check this battery out. Other than that, I think that's going to be the end of the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.